and uh, welcome to, to this installment of Bergeron Briefs. If you haven't seen the show before, my name is Arthur Bergeron. I'm an attorney. I'm at Myrick O'Connell. There are 70 of us there who do a whole bunch of different things. I just do elder law. The purpose of these programs is to not talk about law, though, but really talk about those things, programs and people, which as a senior, you ought to know about if you're a senior here in Northborough. There's one person that you really ought to know about, and you already know her probably, and that's Kelly Burke, who's here again, right? Because yes, we've been a yeah. bunch of times. Yeah. Happy and to be here. And we've talked about, and thanks very much for coming on again, even though we Thank won't even you. talk about the snowstorm that's happening outside, because maybe this thing will be rebroadcast in the middle of June, and <laughs> it'll all be a bad memory. But yes, But thank you absolutely. very much for making it today. No, thank you for asking me. So I know we've dealt with a lot together over the last several years, mm -hmm. because you've been, you've been really involved in this whole come to be dementia friendly creation of yours and Janice Long from Hudson and, 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 and Trish Pope from Marlboro. Mm -hmm. And then in, in some programs that really I think have been an outgrowth of that. So I was wondering if, if once again, for the benefit of people who weren't familiar with what had happened, mm -hmm. if you could talk a little bit about that and what happened here in Northboro. And then we're gonna talk about that new program, which I think okay. is really important for a lot of people to know about. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to talk about it because it's something that means so much to me personally and professionally. Um, the Come to Be Dementia Friendly um, community that we've created was done so by action team made up of community folks. And, uh, you know, as you recall, of course, we went to Minnesota and learned um, how to bring that program here to Northboro, Act on Alzheimer's, which I think is a great model. It gets the people involved from every sector of the community to create that dementia friendly community. Um, as a project, and the we, action... And, and here you had a lot of, you had a people from all over. You had the police, I remember the yes, police chief. Police, people the fire, from fire, businesses in town, right. um, small businesses as well as large. And we had some municipal folks as well. So we were um, very fortunate to have such a diverse group. And we had volunteers that went out and did the surveys. The surveys were part of that model. And um, we really took from the surveys what the community needed and they decided that they needed education about dementia and Alzheimer's and some resources around that. So we kind of took that as an action, as the action team um, put together their project, which was um, some posters, some rack cards that are businesses mm -hmm. um, and some folders that gave businesses some tips about folks that may be coming into their businesses that have dementia yeah. and how to deal with that. Um, so that, that's been... And, and you really got some folks involved in doing that distribution too, right? So right. How, yes. how did that, how did that yeah. work out? We were, we were very fortunate. Um, the police chief who was very involved in the action team yeah. said this is wonderful timing for him because he was hiring um, a whole new uh, group of officers. And he had the idea that he wanted to have these officers go out on walking beats and talk to businesses and introduce themselves to to businesses so that they know who the police department um, is made up of. So he volunteered to have those officers bring packets of information to the businesses. I see. So that's been ongoing and, um, and that's been great. We, and I suppose it's been great for those police officers too, that they're really kind of seeing on the, getting a chance to talk on the ground to the folks who are, who are business people. Right, yeah, that was great. And we also um, had Ta Tammy Pozzaricki, who's the owner of Pleasantries in Marlboro, which is an adult day. Um, social program there, but she's also a phenomenal expert in this field. And so she did trainings with the police and the fire departments here, and I got rave reviews, reviews from both departments. So, yes. so, um, so I am very happy with the full community support that we had, and, and now we're moving forward. And I, and I would suppose that that kind of training too, I remember you're, you're saying in an earlier show, that the train in general training was important, but that really training of those first responders is just critical because yeah, they're, mm -hmm. they're dealing with these folks all the time. Right. And I remember right. your police chiefs coming on and talking about how it changes the whole response to a call. Right. You go to a domestic call and there's an argument happening in the family and, and, the, and the husband's yelling and screaming and you're trained as a policeman to say, this is an alcohol problem or a drug problem. Mm -hmm. And so your response is, you know, quiet down, assert authority. But if they know it's a dementia problem, mm -hmm. like the whole, it's about calming things down. And that's right. It, so it really, really, that's, that, it's wonderful that that kind of training has occurred. Yeah, and the, and the police, you know, I'm sorry to interrupt yeah. you, but I think the police were already on target. They already had an alert form that people can use 
to give the police department information about a loved one who may have dementia. They can upload a photo to the police department so that if, if that person's ever missing, um, the, the local police are responding to that, which is so important. That's a good, I, I'm glad that you reminded me of that. So could you just follow on that a little bit? So mm -hmm. in other words, if I'm, so if I'm living here in Northboro mm -hmm. and I have dementia or my husband does or my wife or some, you know, somebody does in the family, and I want to make sure that if they wander or whatever, that the police are going to be aware of who they are. Mm -hmm. what, do I, what do I do? What do I do? There's a simple, it's called a cognitive alert. Yeah. It's a simple form that you can download from the um, police department, and we have it on um, our site as well, Senior yeah. Center site. Yeah. Um, we also have copies at the Senior Center if it's easy to pick one up. And it's just a very um, short form that asks for the, the loved one's name and information about the loved one, as well as a photo, yeah. a current photo. So the, if that person wanders, um, the local police have that information at their disposal. And that's great, because all is, the police now have the, every, everything's on their phone, right? right? Or in the cruiser. Yeah. So you can actually, somebody's kind of wa you know, wandering around at the Wegmans, Right. The, you, the police can kind of immediately know if you've had the forethought to kind of I inform them that this right. is a person yeah, and, 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 to know, and to know who they are because the good chance they won't have an ID at that point. Right. Right. Yeah. So no, it's, a, a it's, a, it's a great resource. So I, I especially wanted you to come on to talk about the, the, the thing that the, the program that, that you and your, your friends Janice Long <laughs> and Trish Pope have d developed. Because the three of you have really like bonded. I watch the three of you now. Mm -hmm. It's like the three sisters from, right. <laughs> from going to Minnesota because they're, cause mm -hmm. they're the, the senior center directors from Hudson and from, from Marlboro. So you right. kinda, can you kind of talk about you know, the original Hudson program and then how it's changed and, and, and the kind of the role of, of Northboro, which people could, could should be very interested in. Yes, yeah, it's, I'm very excited about this. Um, we did work very well together from September of um, 2015 when we made our journey out to Minnesota. Um, how this evolved is that um, Janice Long and Hudson had run a very successful program called Daybreak. Daybreak is a, a three hour respite for the care partner um, and for the individual with dementia or Alzheimer's, it's a wonderful activity for three hours a day. So, um, so, the, so the way it works is you can, you, if you have, you're, you're caring for someone with dementia, you can bring mm -hmm. the person to the... Northboro Senior Center yeah. to daybreak at the Northboro Senior Center. Yep. And, or, or, the way, or in Hudson, originally in, from Hudson. And then, and then you don't have to stay with your care partner because there's, right. there's things going on. It's a, yes, there's activities, there'll be yep. lunch for that person. It's a three hour program. Yeah. Um, it'll be from 11.30 to 2.30. Um, in our senior center, it'll be on Tuesdays. The really nice thing is that we are um, lifting that program completely from Janice, so there's going to be continuity. Yeah. So Janice has her program on Thursday, yeah. and Trish Pope in Marlboro will yeah. have her program on Wednesday. So the nice thing is with the... And yours is going to be on Tuesday. Yes, yeah, yeah, with the reciprocal nature of senior centers, um, if somebody would like those services, they can use this, the... Northboro on Tuesday, over to Marlboro on Wednesday, and over to Hudson on Thursday if they want to take advantage of those three days. Which is pretty terrific if you're a, if you're a caregiver. Yeah, it's a nice respite. You know, people can go have a haircut, they can go out shopping, they can go home, read a book, they can take a nap, whatever, however they want to use their time. I was which, gonna say, I think it was you that told me that you, that you, that you, you asked the person, so what are you gonna do? <laughs> she said, I just wanna to go to sleep. Right, <laughs> just, I, just I a just, nap. I just wanna break. And then in the meantime, the person who has dementia, there are other folks there with dementia, right, but, right. And, and, and I had forgotten that you're actually provide, you're providing a meal also. Yes. So you're yeah, taking, lunch will taking be care provided. of that responsibility that that caregiver would, would otherwise have. Yeah. But so now tell them about the transportation. This is, this was to me the most exciting part because, you know, I've, I've been involved, I'm really old, so I've been involved forever, you know, <laughs> and, and, but you see communities, we all just live in our town, mm -hmm. which is one of the reasons why that notion, I think, of having individual dementia friendly teams was really important. Right. Because I don't really care if I'm in Marlboro what happens in Northboro. You're a thousand miles away, mm -hmm. right? But there tends to not be that kind of interaction. So tell them about the Right, yeah. So we, we um, in Northboro work with WRTA. We have van service every day for folks over 60 and people with disabilities as well. Um, so that people can take advantage of the van service to come to the senior center. So it would be a dollar and a half each way for folks to come up to... Um, to come up to the senior center yeah. if they're from Northboro. Yeah. Um, I know in West, in um, sorry, in Hudson and Marlboro, they work with Metro West. Um, 
RTA, so I'm sure they'll be the same yeah. type of transportation. Yeah. And the care partner can come along with that person and use the van, and then if they needed to, they could go and do errands with the van as well if they didn't have transportation of their own. So. And, then if you're, and then if you're from Northboro, but you're going to the Marlboro or the Hudson one, then the, the transportation, you can still get the transportation from Northboro? That would be something we'll need to just work out a little bit on that. that and that's that one end. of the things that you're working that's on? That's one of the things that we're working on. But I think exactly. that's, that's, it's really exciting that the, that the three groups are also kind of looking at really trying to provide that accommodation for folks, you know, so that you can have those three days. And yes. you, you had also mentioned, I think when we were, we were talking about the, this, this, obviously the issue of sustainability always mm -hmm. comes up when you're talking about that. But that right. the, your friends group has, has expressed a real interest in trying to keep this program going after the, after the initial grant runs out. Yes, right. yeah, and I know it's the same thing with the other two towns as well. Again, it's really, um, it's, it's not something that happens all the time, that you see these programs being extended over town borders. Right. Um, so I, th I think we're most proud about that, that we can work so well together. Um, and if the friends will have to have a fundraiser, of course, that's how they, right. they make their money. That's right. Doesn't and, fall out of the sky. And, right. right. No, unfortunately not. But I think that the friends in all three towns could get together and have a really, um, you know, a really big fundraiser that oh, would really help. that's interesting. That's interesting. We've talked about and you that, could, too. Right, right. You so. could, and you could have everybody in one place so people right. could even more be bonding over this notion of kind of the sharing of, the sharing of resources. Right. Which is, yeah. which is just a wonderful thing. Right. And we're able to bring the, the Daybreak program to these towns because of Metro West Health Foundation, who awarded us the grant. And I think the, the other nice point is there's a $15 donation per day in any of the three towns. So it's affordable as well for, the, uh, for anybody who's caring for somebody with dementia. Right. Which is a nice perk as well. Right. Right. Because so. that's always the question, right? It's, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's tough enough that you need to be just constantly with the person, right? right. Um, but to also, to, to have to endure some of the extra costs that are mm -hmm. involved, because of course, you know, as, as a, a, I always tell clients, this is, this is, this, so much of this expense results from this defect in the Medicare system, that Medicare will pay for, you know, chemotherapy and operations and all this stuff, but if your loved one just needs someone to help him put on his pants, mm -hmm. or th th that's, Medicare won't cover it because it's not skilled care. So ironically, p these people who have a loved one or who themselves are going through this disease, mm -hmm. which allows you to stay at home, right. unfortunately doesn't allow you to, uh, to get any of the benefits that are typically involved with having a disease. And so a lot of people can stay at home just right. for that reason. Right. So to be able to really kind of subsidize that, down, that's really great. Yeah. So thank you very much for this. Thanks for coming thank on. You. I hope that people Oh, oh, I didn't. When do you think it will start? We um, we were interviewing last week, yeah. so the f the facilitator um, will be new. We're yeah. hiring a new facilitator for Marlboro and Northboro. Yeah. Um, Janice's program, uh, operating for years, um, has a facilitator, Lisa Gardner, who is a Northboro resident, yeah. um, who will be training um, the facil facilitator we have in the other two towns. So um, we're thinking probably mid-April. Mid-April. And, and, your, and your grant money is, a, is like one year's worth of grant money? Yes. And, yeah. then, and then in the meantime, you're hoping that your friends groups, if this works, of course, you know, it's gotta, you got to feel like it works, is, are going to want to continue it. But you know that Janice's program has run for several yes. years now. Yeah, so. and it's done very well. So, so that's really exciting. So, it is if, exciting. And if people have got, have a loved one, should they be, and they want, are thinking about or want to learn more about this program? Is it you? Do, mm -hmm. they, do they talk to Jocelyn? Who do they talk to? Yeah, Jocelyn time? Earhart is our outreach coordinator, and um, she's very helpful. And yeah. um, so either one of us, either myself or Jocelyn, just call the Senior Center. And, and the number is? 508-393-5035. And I'm not even going to try to make you do the email. The, your, your, the My, I finally got it down after, what has it been, 12 years. And your email address <laughs> is? It's K Burke, B U R K E, yeah. Yeah. at town dot Northboro, spelled out U G H at the end, yeah. dot M A dot U S. And maybe our friend Kathy Dalgleish here, who is watching us right now and smiling, will, will also do some kind of a banner so that people I'm will sure be able she to remember will. that. That's great. Thank you very, very much, Kelly, for Thanks, coming Arthur. on. Thank you for watching, and we look forward to talking to you on the next installment of Bridge Run Breeze.